We're flying, there's not a start. There's gonna be a lot of singing in this episode. I'm not sorry. Hi everyone, my name's Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara Just Streamed. And we're running out of things that are coming out that's new that I can stream upon, so I thought we'd take it back to a simpler time. All the way back to 2006 and revisit High School Musical. I was doing some investigating on Disney Plus the other night and realized that all of the original Disney Channel movies are on Disney Plus. And those are some throwbacks that just hit me right in the nostalgic feels. Someone's working on their lawn right outside my window, so I apologize for that. I need you all to bop to the top right on out of here. I decided to wear this outfit because it felt very mismatchy early 2000s, and that's what everyone is wearing in this movie. Everyone has a hat. Everyone. I'm really excited to make so much fucking fun of this movie right now because it's super silly, but honestly, this movie totally holds up. It's so, so fun. There's some really wholesome moments. I think overall, the acting is really good. The choreography is weirdly impressive. The singing, while very like Disney polished and clearly like not in the moment and live, very like, uh, not auto-tuned, but like, polished in post-production it still is good and fun to watch especially as a high school drama student at the time that it came out just i really had a good time revisiting this film it's the first time i've seen it since its heyday in 2006. so without further ado Let's get into High School Musical. We open on Gabriella reading on New Year's Eve and her mother tearing her book away and begging her to party. It's New Year's Eve, you smart bitch. Can you stop embarrassing me and go party? Drink for the first time or something? God. We also see Zac Efron and his father at the same party and they're playing basketball because they're very obsessed with basketball. They're very one-dimensionally obsessed with basketball. So Gabriella and Troy get thrown into this karaoke situation, just forced into it. And I want to make fun of this, but honestly, I forced way too many of my friends into karaoke situations. So go on with your bad self. This karaoke scene is so cheesy though, because he's up there and he's like, I don't know, do I want to sing? I just like basketball. <laughs> I've never sang before. She's super shy. And so he just gives it his all. He goes hard into this karaoke song. And then before she starts singing, it's like, you know what, man, this is whack. And like turns around to leave. And then she starts singing really good. And he's like, what? You peaked my interest, Gabriella, you singing minx. And then he comes in right in time for his part. And his part is just an ooh. And it's just like, it's masterful. Oh God. Ooh. <laughs> so Disney and so cheesy. And then, oh my God, you guys, you're never going to believe this. They go to the same school, the same one. Gabriella ends up at Troy Bolton's school because her mother is transferring to a new job. And she tells her mom that she doesn't want to be the freaky math geek at this school. Didn't you see me reading on New Year's Eve? I'm relatable. I'm a genius and I'm beautiful. Help! So they both meet up and they're both struggling with trying to find who they are in high school, which is actually a relatable thing. And they decide they're not going to audition for the high school musical. That's basically just the whole thing is them deciding and re-deciding and deciding and not deciding and deciding again to audition and not audition for the high school musical. Okay, then we get, get your head in the game and it slaps. Zach is a great actor, obviously. He's turned into from freaking high school musical, from playing Snoopy in my high school's performance of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, to, to then go on and, and, and be in way bigger, amazing roles. He's a really good actor and I, it's been fun to watch his growth and his career. But even here, he's doing a great job. I think a lot of Disney Channel original movies have just maybe one or two of the leads are just not very good generally. And you hate to see it, but Zach is this great exception that he's, 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 he's given his best. But Get Your Head in the Game is his whole basketball, I almost said troop, team. It's the word. Get Your Head in the Game is the entire basketball team and they are doing amazing choreography. It's so cool. I would have loved 
to have been a fly on the wall during the choreo rehearsals for this. Like, how long did it take them to get this down? It's so good. I mean, clearly they're dancers and actors. They're not actual basketball players, but it's very impressive. It's good. I'm sorry, it's good. We then get to know the theater teacher, the drama teacher, and she's so like militant and so extra. And she talks like how you think a TV high school teacher would talk. Like, oh, it's the theater. The power that she thinks that she wields. Wow. My high school drama teacher was very much a cape wearing fiasco of a woman who's just the absolute best. She was so fun and great at her job and super passionate about it. This one has that, but she's also a mean edge. Like she's handing out detentions like Oprah's hands in out cars. There's also some real, I'm not like other girls energy in this movie. I'm smart, not like other girls. I'm not a cheerleader, so my nails are trash. Okay, does it make you stupid to have pretty nails? <laughs> I was such an I'm not like other girls girl in high school. I like scary movies. I play video games. I like Star Wars. I surf. I know how to work on old cars. I wrote a book. I know like other girls. Throughout this movie, there's a lot of confrontation between Troy and his love of basketball and his dad's kind of pressure of his love of basketball and then his want to be this high school musical star, which is wholesome and I think to a certain degree relatable. And, and in high school, you know, you have all this pressure on you to kind of pick something and be good at it and then like transfer that over to freaking college and then somehow transfer that over to an actual real life job. So I think it's really relatable. I think they do a good job with touching upon it in this film, but they're talking about this basketball championship. Like it is a do or die mission. Like this is going to make or break his entire life. He's like, there's gonna be scouts there, Troy. Scouts, did you hear scouts? I'm not trying to be rude here, but I just do not buy that scouts are so invested in this like 5'5 five, five average basketball player from Arizona. <laughs> then his dad is like, do you know how much a scholarship is worth, Troy? They're standing in front of their giant ass, big ass mansion of a house. And by the looks of that mansion, I would say a scholarship is worth 1 18th of a mansion. <laughs> then we get to the part of the movie where they audition for the musical. And Sharpay is there and she's a lot. She's just, Earlier when I was talking about how every Disney Channel original movie has like one of the leads that are just maybe aren't the best. Sharpay's just, she's a lot. <laughs> the overacting is so, I guess, I guess it's like reminiscent of her time on Disney Channel. I feel like the, 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 the acting got so much bigger as I started to grow up a little bit more. It's like growing up like, I don't know, was it always that way? Like even Stevens was the overacting that big? Yes, I'm just looking through things with rose colored glasses. Okay, let's continue. But Sharpay and her brother Ryan auditioned for the romantic leads. Her and her twin brother auditioned for the romantic leads of this school musical. I think she really wants to kiss her brother. Then we see Troy and Gabriella reluctantly get up on stage and you know, sing a little bit, even though the auditions are done and they're not really auditioning. They start pulling out of their asses <laughs> amazing harmonies. They're sight reading this song that they don't know. They've literally already admitted that they've never sang before. How, when did you have the time to learn how to read music? I've been doing theater forever and I still don't know how to read music. How did, that's not. <laughs> so the school finds out that Troy has a callback for this musical now and his friends are pissed. The whole team is just like, you're, you're giving up on, on, on the team and on basketball, on, on your special friend people? How could you do that? And then other people start admitting to these secret things that they love, like hip hop and cello and baking. And it's super fun. And I do think this is a really great song. The no, 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 stick to the stuff you know, st stick to the status quo. This song is so hilariously theater kid. It, oh, it just hits you. It hits you real good. They're like banging on tables and the choreography is so like, no, 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 <laughs> like really big, like too big. Like calm the fuck down theater kid. You gotta, you have to stop. To get away from all of that nonsense, Troy and Gabriella go up to the rooftop garden that their school has. You know, we all had one a beautiful rooftop garden with beautiful plants and silence and serenity. We all, we had it. We all had that safe space in high school, right guys? Right? Am I right? Yeah. 
Troy's dad then finds out that he has a callback and he's so livid with it. He's furious that he likes Gabriella and musicals. And Troy's like, don't you ever think I could do two things, dad? B-ball and musicals? I know you fucking idiot. Of course you can't do two things. This is high school. Get your head in the game. So the friends devise a plan to keep Troy on the b basketball team and Gabriella on the brain athlon. These are two things that I just did not touch in high school, so clearly I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> they pull some future shit and record him saying that Gabriella doesn't matter, the musical doesn't matter, you guys matter, the team matters. And they show it to her, it makes her cry, it's super rude. We're here in 2020 and they're over there doing future shit, living in 2006. <laughs> the webcam that they pull out and put on top of this laptop while he's talking, then he just doesn't notice is happening is ridiculous. Then Troy and Gabriella have a falling out and then the friends see that, see the sadness in their freaking high school little eyes and they apologize in a mature and really lovely way that it's just very wholesome, if not just a little weird. We were jerks. No, we were worse than jerks. We were mean jerks. Isn't it? I mean, a jerk is, it's okay. What? <laughs> Carry on. So then he breaks onto her balcony to sing at her, which is so drama kid of him. And then it just, the movie just gets super wholesome and adorable here on out. The friends are super supportive and helpful. They devise a plan to where they can make the brain athlon and the final game and the callbacks all in the same day. So then we get Sharpay and Ryan's callback song and it's Bob to the top. And I totally forgot about this song until this moment. And it's so freaking high energy and like cringe to the max and I freaking love it. I often sing Bop to the Top as Ike. I always change the words just slightly and he's, you know, bopping to the top. I'm going for the glory, you can do it. What do I change it to? Bop, 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 bop to the top. Slip and slide and ride that rhythm. Jump and bop to the top and strut my stuff. What, whatever, I sing the entire thing as Ike. It's not that interesting. Anyways, moving on. I do that so much though that my brother and I did a cover of Bop to the Top but Sharpay was Ike. As well as this rendition of it, it's very cringy and it's maybe one of my favorite videos I've ever put up on YouTube. And the comment section is so confused about it. Gabriella and Troy make the callbacks by a hair, everyone shows up, everyone's super supportive, and fuck guys, my little baby theater heart is singing and wailing. And I'm so sorry to be a fucking nerd, but I had goosebumps. I loved it, it was super fun, super wholesome. They are giving it their all. They're like flying around, we're soaring, we're flying. There's not a star in heaven that we can't reach. If we're trying! Their friends are so happy for them and they've never heard them sing before and they're just joyful, grinning from ear to ear and his dad comes in and sees him, he's super proud of him. They go on to win the championship. I also love that we get like 30 seconds of actual gameplay in this entire movie and it's like a very big part of the film is basketball and we only, that's all we need, just 30 seconds. Everyone's happy, the wrap up is cheesy as hell. I loved seeing this again, I loved it. I also think that this might be one of the better Disney Channel original movies. So I'm interested to see if others hold up as well as this because I have fond memories of some of these movies. The motocross one and the, the two twin basketball players one and um, Smart House and the just, uh, you know, every single Lizzie McGuire movie. Oh shit. Oh. It is going down with the Lizzie McGuire movie, guys. So let me know what you would like me to revisit because I think that Disney Channel original movies is a fun thing that I would really love to just explore. Gotta get you, get your head in the game. You gotta get you, get you, get you, get your head in the game. You gotta make sure to hit the rebound. Do 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 when the crowd go wild. Do 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 do. Maybe this time we'll hit the right note. Wait a minute, not the time or place. Wait a minute, get your head in the game. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next week. Bye. My head's in the game, but my heart's in the song. It makes me feel so something. Wait a minute, not the time or place.